What's up everyone, it's your boy NornRad89 here bringing you another video and for today's video I wanted to talk about 31 films to watch for this October season. Yes, Spooktober is right around the corner. We have 31 days in there and I wanted to talk about and said highlight a film for each day, you know what I mean? Not to push it too hard, you know, like I said, this is just a list of 31 films that are not in any particular order, like, you know, of ranking or anything like that. I kind of put them in order based on what I think you should watch them. Just kind of like, you know, a good vibe of different films over, you know, different days. You know, having family type films, but more hardcore type films. But then, you know, as it goes deeper into Halloween, more Halloween themed films. So, yeah, I kind of made it in an order, but not like a ranking order or anything like it, like that in terms of which film is better than which. And also, I want to talk about, like I said, this list has some pretty common films on here that we'll talk about usually for October but also some uncommon ones that I wanted to highlight for real so this is going to be a really fun video and also excuse my appearance or my look or my voice I was up working last night I only slept like two hours so it's been a pretty wild night like I said I worked 10 hours last night only slept a couple hours now shooting this video because I want to get this out on October 1st so let's get down to this list roll it Now let's kick this off with day one of October. The first film I think you should start out with is Hellfest. This one follows three young women who go with their three young boyfriends to a ghoulish haunted carnival that travels around town and they end up going to just the wrong night. They pick the wrong night to go to this carnival because the other shows up there. And for me, that's one of the most underrated modern slashers is the other the only reason he doesn't really get talked about that much is because this is the only film that that character is in this slasher but hellfest is the perfect film to start out october because it's got really strong halloween vibes the haunted carnival setting it's got a great young cast fun characters and it's a quick watch and it's a very simple one and like i said some really cool creative kills as well so hellfest coming in for day one of october for day two, I think you should travel all the way back to 1999, and we're going to watch Idle Hands, and this one is fantastic for me because this one always pulls me back to nostalgia, just being a young kid, but having Devin Sawa in here just really commands the screen. Seth Green, there's a whole cast of really amazing characters in this film and actors. They're all charismatic. There's a really strong Halloween party third act, so yeah, this one screams October, screams Halloween vibes, and also has some comedy in there too to you know give you some levity with the gruesome scenes that are in this film so we're going to take it back even further and go back to the 30s with frankenstein and yes this is one of the og classics that i think is a staple in the horror community and if you haven't watched this film because i know there's some people who are very up to date with a lot of the 70s 60s and 80s and 90s horror films but sometimes you got to go all the way back to the 30s the 40s and the 50s there's some really good horror films that came back in those eras too you know what i mean so go back watch frankenstein and i think this is one of those perfect films that you should put on at like you know midnight or 11 o'clock at night and just really enjoy the visuals because there's some really great cinematography in this movie next up on day four we're gonna watch Wes Craven's Scream yes this is one of those OG slashers that really just kind of revitalized the franchise and now it's an OG slasher when it came out in the 90s you know it was new it was fresh it really changed the game forever now it's just it's literally on the pedestal on the mountain with Jason and Michael Myers and all the other slashers so Ghostface gets all the respect that he deserves and Scream this first film I think is still the best film in the franchise and and kicking off, you know, day four, I think it's really cool to dip your toes into, you know, some slasher territory. This one doesn't really have strong Halloween vibes, you know, like that or anything. But like I said, this film isn't going to be, or this list isn't going to be littered with a ton of Halloween themed type movies. But like I said, these are a really good list of 31 films that I think you should watch and would give you a good, really good scares for Spooktober. Day 5, we're going to talk about Night of the Living Dead, George A. Romero's classic, the, the zombie film that just really changed the game and made zombies the way they are today. Night of the Living Dead is one of those key films for me because it's the first black and white film that I ever watched as a kid and that I really soaked up and absorbed. And George A. Romero is just an icon. And like I said, this film is another film kind of similar to Frankenstein, you know, with those black and white vibes, the cinematography, and like I said, this one being such a staple in the horror community because he modernized 
you know, zombies for a modern audience and really changed the game. So George A. Romero, like I said, Chef's Kiss, we love you. Night of the Living Dead, perfect for day five of October. Next up, we're going to talk about The Halloween Tree from 1993. This is an animated film, and I believe this was made for TV. This is a Hanna-Barbera based on a Ray Bradbury story. This film, like I said, is animated and really just takes me back to also nostalgia being a kid again. This is a really good story about some friends who have a sick friend on Halloween, and he goes to the hospital, and they see his spirit, and they want to go out and try to retrieve his spirit and bring it back to his body and also the characters go through some really cool history with the costumes that they're dressed up as in the film so and it's narrated by ray bradbury's voice so like this film is just iconic for me for me because like i said 1993 television film this was a staple and i do remember as a kid watching this film and just experiencing it and like I said this is one of those movies that always takes me back to that time and this one screams halloween vibes so the halloween tree from 1993 i highly recommend so we're going to go back to the 80s and 87. We're going to talk about the Monster Squad, which this is a really cool one. This is kind of like Goonies. If you're a fan of Goonies, this is going to be right up your alley. It's about five youngsters who end up coming across, you know, the universal monsters. They have Dracula in here, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Creature from the Black Lagoon. And it's that fun movie because it's got, like I said, those Stranger Things, like 80s vibes. So if you're into Goonies, you're into Stranger Things, the Monster Squad is going to be right up your alley. And this is one of those movies that I didn't see at a young age. I saw this when I got older, and it was one of those films that I always kicked myself because I was like, why didn't I experience this at a younger age? Because I would have loved it. Just kind of upset at myself that I waited so long to watch this film because I think the first time I watched this movie, I was probably like 17 or 18. But The Monster Squad is another very strong Halloween vibe film because we got all the universal monsters in here. And like I said, some comedy in here too, also to levity the situations. Next up, we're going to talk about Poltergeist, and Poltergeist is my favorite Toby Hooper film, and in terms of haunted houses or, you know, any kind of exorcism type films, anything like that, Poltergeist is the one that's right up my alley. It's got such a strong family dynamic. There's some really cool characters in here and some really charismatic characters, and some of the special effects still land today because we have the legendary Toby Hooper at the helm of the director chair. So, yeah, Poltergeist is one of those films that, for me, always during the Halloween season, it's a staple. I'm going to be watching this film. Next up, we're going to talk about Dark Harvest, and I believe this one is actually also based on a book, and this is from 2023, so this is a more recent release, and when it comes to Dark Harvest, the reason I like this one is it's got really strong halloween theme vibes, it's got a really cool creature design in this film, but also it takes place in the, the, in the setting, it takes place in the 50s, and for me, that's a big thing, because that's kind of untapped potential when it comes to horror films you don't really typically see a lot of horror films set in the 1950s and like I said this one being set in the 50s really does like give it some really cool aesthetic and they really take advantage of that and I love the acting in here too so yeah Dark Harvest is one that I would totally watch for this October season. Next up, we're going to talk about one of my favorite directors, and that's Edgar Wright. And we're going to go with Shaun of the Dead because I'm such a zombie sucker. I'm a really, really into the zombie subgenre. And Shaun of the Dead is one of those films that really took comedy and horror and made it such a beautiful blend. And like I said, there's some really good subtextual commentary on society in this film as well. So Edgar Wright really did just kind of... Almost like George A. Romero, blow the doors open for zombie films and what he did with this movie and Shaun of the Dead. I think this is a really cool one because how I designed this list is there's more kind of family lighthearted films, kind of more at the top end of this list. And for me, when me as a horror fan or me as like when I watch horror movies and especially during the spooky season, the more hardcore films, I typically kind of save those for like the last two weeks of October. So you're going to see some of the more lighthearted stuff in here in the top half of this ranking or this top half of this list. And that's why Shaun of the Dead is right here. Now we're at day 11 already, and that's The Fun House. That's what we're going to talk about. Another Toby Hooper film, and this is my second favorite Toby Hooper film. I know that's going to be controversial. People are like, where's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, blah, 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 blah. There's going to be some hate comments in the comments for that. <laughs> but The Fun House is, like, really 
just a key film that hit me at a certain time in my life when I was a child. It's about these four teens. They go to spend a night at the fun house in this kind of traveling carnival, and they think, oh, it's really cool. It's, let's, it's, it's nice and sexy. Let's have a date. Let's stay over at the fun house. And they end up finding out that the people that work at this carnival are not people that you want to be around. So, And there's some really cool stuff in here, creature design that I that I really enjoy. And when it comes to the third act, Man, money. And also one of my favorite Final Girls is in this film, A Forgotten Final Girl, which is kind of a tease for a show that I'm going to be having on my channel pretty soon, Forgotten Final Girl. So I don't want to say too much about this girl yet, but yeah, The Fun House, a Toby Hooper film. If you haven't seen this one, perfect for the Spooktober season. Next up, we have the Wolfman remake, and I know people are going to be kind of taken back a little bit with that one, but this is kind of just to get more eyes on this film, because the Wolfman remake with Benicio Del Toro and Anthony Hopkins is a really good film. I'm not lying to you people, like, for real. Anybody who's kind of held up on the fact that, like, oh, I don't want to watch that, they went all the way back and remade this black and white universal monster movie, no, like, no, 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 no. Yeah, Benicio Del Toro, Anthony Hopkins, Emily Blunt, they really knock it out of the park in here. Hugo Weaving is in this film as well, so we got a fantastic cast. I love the setting, and I think the acting is really strong in this film. So the Wolfman remake, really, if you're sitting on the chair right now and you have not seen this film and you're watching this video, you need to stop this video right now and go find this movie and watch it. Now we're at day 13 of October, and you think, oh, there's going to be a Friday the 13th film in here, but no, your boy Norn Rat 89 I kind of typically, I do I do watch Friday the 13th films during October, but I know most people, they save that stuff for kind of like the summer season, and that's just more of a summer vibe, the Camp Crystal Lake thing. So coming in at number 13 is going to be Psycho 2, and you know your boy Norn Rat 89 I'm a sequel whore, and Psycho 2, this is another kind of plug to get more eyes on this film because when I talk to a lot of people they've only seen the first Psycho and Psycho 2 is really a great sequel one of the best in the horror community and this is like written by Tom Holland he written like the story great for real so and Perkins fantastic performance as Bates so Psycho 2 is one of those films that's a great slasher it kind of turns the slasher genre on its head a little bit so that I'm always here for all the way back to the 50s for a creature from the Black Lagoon directed by Jack Arnold and this one is one of those films that in terms of classic universal monster films it's really one of those films that laid down the template and foundation for future films i love the creature design in this film and like I said creature from the black lagoon is one of those movies after returning to it doing my universal monster review series recently and returning to this film i had such a blast so i think for now on september time i'm gonna kind of make that a like universal monster movie thing like just every september from now on kind of dive into these movies and just re-watch them because i've been having so much fun and like I said creature from the Black Lagoon is one of my all-time favorites when it comes to these films, so staple, I think, for the October season. We have A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, and we have our boy Freddy right back there. You can see him right there, and Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, the reason this one's on here, we're kind of getting into, we're at day 15 now, we're getting into the more hardcore films, so as we get into the latter half of October, you're going to get some horror that is stronger more you know scary got some more gruesome effects and like I said just really more hardcore horror that i think and the nightmare on elm street part two the reason it's on here it's is my favorite freddy film and you know i'm a sequel horror of course and this one has the creepiest darkest most evil freddy in it and that's why it's on here so yeah nightmare on elm street part two freddy's revenge deserves this 15th spot on my list for october 35 31 movies I know you can see I'm already rambling and rumbling on, like stumbling, you know, like I said, I was up working last night, only slept a couple hours, so like I said, again, excuse my appearance or any kind of stumbling or mess ups I do in this video. But, now we're at day 16 in October, we're going to be talking about Ty West. House of the Devil, and Ty West is one of my favorite horror directors in the game right now. What he did with the X trilogy was just fantastic, but today I wanted to talk about House of the Devil. This is much more a slow burn type horror film, so you really got to commit, because I'm going to not lie to you right now, for about 70% of this movie, 
nothing really happens. It's much more that tension that Ty West is able to weave throughout the entire film that he just kind of is able to suck you into this character played by Jocelyn Donahue and you're just right there with her and he teases you the whole film and then in the last like about 15 minutes of this movie it goes balls to the wall and they throw everything out there and like I said House of the Devil one of my favorite Ty West films. Next up, we have Ridley Scott's Alien, and I know a lot of people are on the Alien high because we had Alien Romulus come out this year, and, you know, why not go back and watch Alien? And for me, I'm a sucker for sci-fi horror, and 1979's Ridley Scott's Alien is one of those films that has never done it better. There's very few films that have done it better than this movie. So, like I said, Alien, I highly recommend going and watching this film because this is another one that's kind of a slow burn, but it gets you involved in the characters, introduces some really cool atmosphere, really cool practical effects, and like I said, Alien stands the test of time because Ridley Scott and the crew committed to doing a lot of practical stuff, a lot of on-set stuff, and the sound effects, the sound design. That's another very important thing of this movie that just kind of immerses you in this atmosphere. We have Paranorman from 2012, and Paranorman is one of my favorite kind of lighthearted films. This is one that I threw in here kind of to give some, you know, a little bit of balance because as we're getting into these later films, like I said, we're going to get a little bit more hardcore. Paranorman is the first, the perfect film, I think, to give you a little balance, a little bit of comedy levity. This is a family film. You can watch this with your entire family, and I love it because it involves, you know, witches. It involves curses. It involves zombies, so there's really strong Halloween vibes throughout and Norman is one of my favorite characters when it comes to animated characters so this film like I said is really strong got some really cool animation and Paranorman is one I highly recommend because at the heart of it the story is one of those stories that will will speak to you now next up we have Killer Clowns from Outer Space sorry wrong hand there we go Killer Clowns from Outer Space let's grab our bad boy slim i recently went to a horror convention with my son and my family and everything and we picked up this bad boy right here that's a cool one right there, an example. Yeah, so Killer Clowns from Outer Space, another example of a great comedy horror film. So I threw this one in here with Paranorman because this is kind of a great double feature watch. Say, like I said, day 18, you watch Paranorman. Day 19, get some Killer Clowns in there. And this was the first horror film that I ever showed my son. So Killer Clowns from Outer Space is another perfect film that's a introductory horror type film there are some grown-up stuff in here but like i said this is a film that you can show your kids and like i said kind of get them dipping their toes in the water a little bit into the horror community which is just fantastic so yeah killer clowns from outer space i highly recommend now we're at number 20 and we're here to talk about one of the big dogs and we're going real serious right here we're talking about clive barker's Hellraiser and like I said we're getting into the more heavy more hardcore films we only got about 11 days left after this when we talk about this film and Hellraiser is one of those key body horror films that when I watched this film it just opened up the doors and opened up my eyes for so many other horror films that are out there and Hellraiser Clive Barker's writing just so fantastic Doug Bradley's acting Ashley Lawrence in here like for me Hellraiser is like a pinnacle, a peak. There's very few flaws I have with this film, like really none. Like this is one of those films that the only flaw I have with it is basically that it's not really for everybody because it will be too hardcore for some people. But Hellraiser is one that, like I said, I highly recommend, especially for this spooktober Halloween season. If you have not checked out this film, do your boy Norn Rad a favor and watch Hellraiser. Next up, we have The Evil Dead by Sam Raimi, and I went with just the original and the very first one. I do think Evil Dead 2013 is the best film in this franchise, but I wanted to go back and hearken back to the original, the one that started it all. You know I'm a sequel whore as well, but Evil Dead 2013 isn't a sequel. You know, it's a fun fact. It's not a sequel anymore, but The Evil Dead by Sam Raimi. I really adore this film, giving us Ash for the first time. Yes, it's not the typical Ash that we would know in later films, but for me, when I watch this film, this is kind of one of those movies that I discovered at a certain age as a teen on HBO programming, you know what I mean, on cable, late night, when your parents and your grandparents were asleep and you probably weren't supposed to be up watching movies, and I watched this film, and it did kind of creep me out. So The Evil Dead is one of those movies that, like I said, calls back to nostalgia, really digs back in that lizard brain and brings me back to a certain time. And I think this one is still, to this day, when I watch all the films in the franchise, I still think this first film is the scariest one. Evil Dead 2013, I think, is the best movie 
but I think the Evil Dead, the first one, is the scariest one in the franchise. Next up on day 22, I wanted to go more creature feature heavy, and this is one that totally surprised me. This is a movie that I did not go see in theaters. This was a home watch. I just ordered it on the TV and watched this film, and it was A Quiet Place. And this is one of those movies that, like I said, creature features, uh, it really stuck out because it's built into the way that Krasinski kind of styled this film when it comes to the characters, the first act, the second act, the third act. This is just really a really strong script and story. So when you watch this film, it's going to grab you, grab a hold of you, pull you in and like all the way weave these certain storylines and leave these little like, you know, these nuggets and then the third act payoff is so good. So yeah, for me, A Quiet Place and from is still the strongest film in this franchise because we have three we have three films in this franchise now and I think this first film is still the strongest one. Up, we have Graveyard Shift from 1990, and this is just such a 90s nostalgia film. This is a Stephen King film, and this is based off a Stephen King short. And Graveyard Shift is just one of those films for me. I'm, I'm, I work graveyards, so that's another reason why it calls back to me. But I think this is one of the most underrated Stephen King films of all time. When I see Stephen King lists and I see people talk about Stephen King movies, they never, never bring this film up. We have a fantastic cast. Kelly Wolf, Stephen Mack, David Andrews. We have Brad Dorff in here. One of my favorite performances by Brad Dorff. So really, Graveyard Shift, if you haven't seen this film, it's, you know, it feels dirty, it feels grimy, but it also has this really cool creature feature vibe. It's got these crazy characters and like Brad Dorff is probably one of the best ones. He's got... Probably the best sequence where he just steals the scenery completely when he's talking to one of our characters. But yeah, Graveyard Shift, I highly recommend. And if you haven't seen this film, for me, like I said, this is a staple every Halloween season. I watch this movie. Next up, we have John Carpenter's The Thing, pulling out one of the OGs, one of the greatest horror directors in history, and John Carpenter's The Thing. Yes, this is a remake, and this is one of those prime examples of a remake that did everything better than the original this film is dark it's got great practical effects it's really heavy in the content but it's able to be one of those most tension-filled films and after you watch this movie like you literally feel kind of unsafe like there's just something about this movie like even me as somebody who's watched this film over and over and over since I was probably like 15 or 14 years old John Carpenter's The Thing is one of those movies that just makes you feel unsafe and is able to get this tension going and has some really good acting in it as well. And like that cold setting, oh, this might be more perfect for the December, kind of November time because it's more cold in that season. But I kind of put this film on the list because we're going to talk about another film. We already talked about Clive Barker's Hellraiser. We're doing John Carpenter's The Thing. And there's another film we're going to come up with later down the line on the list that you know, has some involvement with both of these movies. Now we're at day 25 of October, and we're going to talk about Charlie Band's Puppet Master. And if you're a fan of the channel, or you've been watching the channel at any way, shape, or form over the last year, you know I'm a huge Puppet Master fan. I did get the box set, and I went through all the films. I ranked them all. I watched them all. And these are films that are really call close to home for me and close to heart because I got introduced to these at a young age. My grandma was the one that introduced me to this franchise, So, and I love the crazy puppet characters. When it comes to, like, you know, doll horror or puppet horror or anything like that, this is my franchise, not Child's Play. I do like Chucky and I do love Child's Play, but I'm more of a Puppet Master fan because of that straight-to-video kind of horror vibe the Richard Band, the music, Ugh, Richard Band, just the music he's able to do just speaks to me. So yeah, Puppet Master is one of those films that will always be, you know, during the Spooktober season, I'll be diving into these films. Now we're going to talk about Pumpkinhead from 1988, starring Lance Henriksen, directed by Stan Winston, and probably one of the coolest films to watch during October. This is a creature feature flick where we have our father who's played by Lance Henriksen. His son dies and then he goes to like kind of this evil kind of dark witch in the woods and asks her to summon an ancient creature to take revenge for him. And man, like this film is just a really cool film because we got strong act acting from Lance Henriksen. He really does carry a majority of this film, but also the creature design and the creature effects, all practical. And Stan Winston is one of those 
those legends in the game. So Pumpkinhead is one of those films that, like I said, for October season, it is the perfect, perfect thing because it screams that Halloween atmosphere and it's a strong story at the heart of it. And like, this is one of those movies when I think of people and they're like, oh, horror films, they're, they're not good movies. They don't have good stories or good characters. Pumpkinhead's one of those films that always kind of comes to the top of my mind when people say that because I'm like, really watch this film because it has characters that you love to hate. It has characters that you sympathize with, but it also has characters that you kind of are like, oh, you're heartbroken with. So it's like, yeah, Pumpkinhead is one of those really good films I highly recommend. Next up, we have The Void from 2016. And I know I promised you we were going to get more hardcore, like I said, as we get into these later films in October. And The Void was the one that I wanted to bring up because when it comes to Hellraiser and it comes to John Carpenter's The Thing, it's like those two films met and had a baby. And that's what The Void would be. That's how I was best to describe this film. So if you've never seen this film, The Void 2016, just go in based off what I just said right there. This film has some really cool practical effects. It's got some of the most haunting imagery I've seen in a recent film. And it's got a very bleak, dark, you know, dark third act. So this is one of those films, like, you be warned, when you take this journey... It's going to change you. And like I said, The Void is one of my favorite watches over the last, like, probably five years. Because I've seen it within the last, you know, recent five years. In terms of recent watches, The Void is one of the best, for sure. Next up, we have Don Cascarelli's Phantasm from 1979. One of my favorite 70s horror films. And when it comes to The Tall Man, when it comes to Phantasm, this is the first and probably only film that I could remember in the horror like community or horror films that I've watched that actually gave me nightmares when I was at a young age. Maybe it was just because, like I said, I watched this at that perfect age. I was around the same age of the character, the main protagonist boy in this film, and the tall man is just creepy. There's just something about him that is really scary, and the way Angus Grimm is way able to portray him, oh, this film's got fantastic music too haunting vibes haunting imagery like i can't gush enough about phantasm because this is one of those films that kind of like i said it makes my cheeks red i get goosebumps thinking about this film because it's so good it is so good on so many levels there are many other films in this franchise and i would say phantasm 2 and 3 definitely worth a watch 4 and 5 i would say you know you could kind of take them or leave them but the first three phantasm films i think are a really really good solid trilogy you didn't think we'd have an October list without bringing up Trick or Treat. I know this is one of those ones that's kind of usual. You're like, Norn Rat 89, this is on everyone's October list. Well, yeah, that's why, you know what I mean? Because Sam is syn anonymous. You know, he's just or synonymous with the holiday now. Sam, the character from Trick or Treat, has basically cemented himself as one of those icons that's right up there with Jason, Freddy, Dracula, Frankenstein. So Trick or Treat is basically like an anthology film that takes place where it has all these different storylines that take place on halloween night they all intersect we got some werewolf stuff in here some slasher stuff in here some really creepy stories and stuff about you know kids that died on a bus crash you know so trick or trick or treat really fantastic you know halloween atmosphere and probably to be honest one of the strongest ones we're going to talk about another film coming up soon we only got two more films to talk about on this 31 list and I think Trick or Treat and then another film down on the list, strongest Halloween vibes out of all the films that I've talked about so far. Here we are at day 30, almost to the end. And I know some people might be like, this is a little bit of controversial pick, but day 30, I'm going to go with John Carpenter's Halloween, the OG classic. And you're like, Norn Rad, why not on day 31? Why not on the last day of October? I'll explain to you when we get to that movie. You know, hold on, patience, wait, you know, a little bit of patience. That's a virtue. But John Carpenter's Halloween is an OG classic slasher that really is just like warm comfort food. It is so easy to digest and it just really has a great score. And John Carpenter, the way he was able to execute this film, like I said, it's so simple. For some people, I would say like modern audiences, I can see some kids watching this film and being like, oh, it's boring. There's no gore. The pacing's awful or the acting's awful, which all might be true. Those all might be facts. But when it comes down to when this film came out, like I said, John Carpenter, Jamie Lee Curtis, Dave, Donald Pleasance, like all these people in this film that were involved in making this movie, Deborah Hill, rest in peace, we love you. They all did a fantastic job and really brought to life, like I said, one of the greatest slasher films of all time. So we're going to talk about, like I said, Day 31, the final film on this list, and that's 
Kevin S. Tenay's Night of the Demons. And why I brought this list, this one out is because I recently actually went to a horror convention, the Morgan Crypt Horror Convention, with my family and the kids and stuff. And we got to meet Linnea Quigley. And I actually got her to sign this bad boy right here. Oh my God, she signed this for me. And I got a sweet, sweet picture from her too as well that she signed, if I can get this right. The, the lighting is awful right there. There we go. That's better lighting. <laughs> but yeah, Linnea Quigley, Night of the Demons. Like I said, this is the film for me that challenges Trick or Treat in terms of Halloween vibes, Halloween atmosphere. I think this is the best film that I'd like love it. For me, over the last, I want to say, six years, this has been my Day 31 October film. Like, I have to watch this film on Halloween, either the night that night or that day that morning but typically this is a perfect night film this is like my cap off ending film you know trick-or-treating is done we're done baking you know everyone's kind of settling down they're just munching their candy hanging out this is the movie that i put on because it's like said that perfect halloween atmosphere and a great end cap for the night especially if you've had a fantastic halloween and like I said you went out trick-or-treating you got all your candy done or you were done handing out candy and you watched other films like I said it's just such a great end cap for the night. It's gruesome. It's got Evil Dead vibes. It's campy in nature. Cool kills. So cool practical effects as well. Uh, great, great score. The score in here is fantastic. One of my favorite scores ever in a horror film is from this film. So yeah, and I'm gushing over it too because like I said, Linnea Quigley, getting a chance to meet her and getting a signature. And I got her to sign my son's name on this one. So I told my son, I was like, you got to save this forever because I got her to sign my son's name on this one. She she put my name on the other picture. But yeah, so yeah, I think this is just one of those films for me that will always be that perfect film for me to end Halloween on. And like I said, since it's been that tradition over the last six years, I really don't think I'm going to change it because it's such a fantastic film. There are sequels to this film too. Night of the Demons 2, Night of the Demons 3 are good films. I recommend watching those two films as well. The remake, I'm kind of mediocre on. I do enjoy the remake, but not as much as this one. Nowhere near as close. Like the remake is kind of, you know, half-hearted to me. This original film is just perfect. I hope you all enjoyed that video. I know this was a really long one. We had to talk about 31 films, but like I said, I wanted to get them out there, and I wanted this to be on October 1st. That way I can get that list out there, and you can all have a chance to watch these films. Like I said, I think this, for me, is the perfect 31 list, and the way I laid it out is kind of like a good you know, balance of watching these cool like kind of old-school classics, some hardcore horror films, but we also have some family stuff on here, some kid-centered ones as well. So, yeah, there's a whole host of great films to enjoy on this list. But please let me know down below in the comment section what do you think of my Spooktober list, and what are some films that you typically watch or traditions for your Halloween season. I would love to discuss with you, but please like the video that definitely helps out the channel subscribe if you're new to the channel and have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime i drop a video but most importantly i want you all to have a safe and happy day peace out boyfriends to a traveling haunted carnival or haunted like you know a little 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 little